there's an ant on my screen. It's not a real ant. I just got got by a JavaScript trick ant. Where are you going with the letter? That's so fun and really annoying. Welcome home, brave heroes. I'm Ash, this is Ash Quest, and I may be a bit of a rarity because even though I love HeroQuest and love creating my own quests in HeroQuest, I've never actually used HeroScribe. What is HeroScribe? HeroScribe is a completely free software program that should run on just about any operating system and is distributed under the GNU GPL license created by Flavio and Valerio Chierichetti that allows you to create your own HeroQuest quest maps. The thing that makes this distinguished and different from other methods is that it has a ton of third-party support. A lot of people have made a lot of material for it over the decades that it has been in existence. And so we have a ton of different icon packs. We have a ton of different map boards that we can use. We're going to just jump into this and download it, install it, use it, show it off, see what it can do, because it may be all very important to know how this works for future reference. I have a lot to say about the presentation of this website. First of all, I love the old school look. I just don't see websites that look like this anymore. I'm in a 2K resolution here, but I can already tell you, top half of this takes up so much unnecessary space it is awesome the bottom half yeah that's this is absolutely a 90s style menu look at it we have a guest book we have ad banners that are self-serving that take you to a thanks page where you can donate xml's this might be a place to share quests that you make icon packs i gotta sign the guest book you know that I signed the guest book. If you never signed a guest book, you need to. It's a once in a lifetime experience. The, the ad banners are, are custom and they're like randomized. They're, they're all clever and so cute. They're all different every time I land on a different page. The last time this guest book was signed was June 3rd and before that March 3rd and before that January 15th. Man, go sign the guest book. HeroScribe makes producing typographic quality HeroQuest maps an easy task. It is written in Java and PostScript. Its main output format is EPS, the de facto standard in the printing industry. All right, we're going to go to the downloads page. Downloads page has a lot of cool stuff on it. Uh, some of it can be a little hard to navigate because it looks like they changed kind of the style, the format of where things are placed when they offer the downloads. Uh, oh, here are the smileys. The smileys weren't available in the guest book. The hero quest icons were not in the guest book. Missed opportunity. I'm gonna take these. I'm gonna use them for my Discord. By the time you watch this video, you'll be able to use these in my Discord. Basically, there's an explanation of what Hero Scribe is here on the downloads page, and it tells you that you do require the Java Runtime Environment 8 in order to be able to use this. That is true, and I discovered today that I do not have Java Runtime Environment Environment? Environment 8. Or at least I didn't. Clicking on this link will bring you to Oracle, and you can find the version of Java that you're supposed to download, which is JRE8, and once you click on that, make sure you click on the tab that has your operating system minus Windows. Then scroll back up, because this likes to jump you down a little bit. Or at least it does me. I'm using my Brave browser. That may be very important, so pay attention to that. And the link that I would need would be the x64 installer, which is right here. There's just one problem when I click on that here at the oracle.com website. They want me to create an account and sign in, and by golly, I hate that. That's not, that's, that's not HeroScribe's fault at all. So I went to gist.github.com, and I went to Wei of Zhang's Java download, where you can just download that exact same file and not have to make an account with Oracle. Now that I've done that, we've got two different options to put this on our machine. We can get the installer or we can just get the zip file that contains all the files and keep it portable. I actually really like portable files, so that's the one I'm going for. All right, absent from the actual downloads page is the icon pack, and that's because the icon packs are on their own page. So when we click on that or on the huge icon packs link at the front and center of the page, we are brought to a place where we can download whatever icon pack we want. Guys, there are a ton of these and they had the generous foresight to just simply combine them all into one. There is an all-in-one icon pack. It literally has 1,700 new icons, 220 mini icons, 16 boards, a new trap method, hotkeys, and a bunch of other little features. I just downloaded this here. Uh, one thing that I noticed while I was here, this may be because I'm using the Brave browser, is some of these files did not download when I clicked on them. I had to right click on the file 
and click save link as. And when I did that, the explorer save as window came up. So now that we've got that done, we can unzip the all in one folder and we can unzip the hero scribe portable folder. And the next thing that I'm going to do is just copy all of the contents of the all in one folder, just copy go right into the hero scribe folder and then paste them right in there. It'll take a little while, but all of your icons will go to the exact right folders that they're supposed to. If you get any prompts or warnings about overwriting files with the same name, just say yes, go ahead and do that because you're updating those files with new versions of themselves. And now that we've done that, we've got one folder that will work no matter where I put it. Everything is self-contained in this folder. I can delete all the zip files and all the other folders and stuff that I have. Oh wow, there were almost 10,000 things in that folder. And we have this, the, all, all of our work has led to this moment. We double click on the heroscribe.jar file. We get our lovely splash screen, and here we are. Here is the quest editor. I love it. All right, so there's a lot of blank canvas around right now, and I could very well zoom in to just this using the magic of video editing. But before I do that, I wanna show you why there's so much blank canvas here. And yours might look a little bit different because I'm in a 2K resolution. I'm not trying to be fancy. That's just the resolution that I, I find is most useful for when I need to edit my videos. Uh, we have menus up here, file, board, region, and help. And when we go to the file menu, we have the ability to make a new quest, open a quest, save a quest, uh, save quest as, as well as export to PDF, EPS, or PNG. All of these are lovely, lovely options to have. You can also change your preferences, but all that does is edit your ghost script path. If you don't know what that is, don't mess with it. So we're gonna go to new, and then you have options under new. You can create a single new quest that will give us the single quest board. You can create a quest 1x2, that's one column, two rows of quest boards. This allows us to create a double-sized quest. Pretty cool. Uh, not only that, but we can do 2x1, we can do 2x2. Now we have the capability of designing and having eyes on all four boards simultaneously, a quest like the Dark Company. And we can go to file and we can even create a 3x3 quest. I don't know what madman you'd have to be to create nine interconnecting boards, but um, You'd have to be, you'd have to be quite dedicated. You could also just create an entire campaign this way, uh, nine separate quests. You wouldn't necessarily have to make it all one quest that requires all nine boards. That would be quite a slog. Anyway, we'll select one quest and now I will zoom in on this quadrant because the rest of the information is there. There's no information in the rest of the canvas. We have three options. We can add an object. When we click that, we get access to heroes. Uh, and we can change by clicking on this little drop down arrow to one of these several, many, super numerous, is that a word? Other different folders of things. We don't just have heroes, we have all in one pack heroes. We have monsters. We have all in one pack monsters. So that's the all in one pack files give us absolutely everything. And if you'd like to remove the bloat from this, uh, which I don't recommend because I actually think it's a good idea to separate your base stuff from your all-in-one stuff. So that way you're not constantly searching through the giant all-in-one lists to get your specific piece of furniture or whatever. Then you could go into your icons. We have raster, sample, and vector. You could go into any of these folders, Europe or USA, and then you'll see all of the folders that are named for the options in the app. You can take out whatever you like, whatever you don't need to have available in the app that way. I don't recommend doing that or messing with this unless it is you do know what you're doing and you're comfortable with that. I am, I don't have a problem going in here and taking out quests and stuff entirely just to customize the program, but it is not necessary to do that. So let's go back to heroes, just click on barbarian and then you'll see the barbarian is now attached to my cursor and I know exactly where he's going to go before I lay him down. I'll just put all four heroes right here in the center room, wizard at the very end. By the way, under the region, we can choose between Europe layout and USA layout. And when we do that, the colors automatically change. That's nice. That is always lovely to see. I am an HQuest builder man. I, I like doing HQuest builder stuff very much, but it is cool to see this kind of functionality in other methods of making quests as well. If you go to the help menu, you're just going to get the about screen or 
the link to the objects page. It tells you about the all-in-one objects. So we could skip that. We also have board and this is like, this is where heaven begins for me because we can choose between hero quest and advanced hero quest, blank hero quest, double inverted hero quest. This is two hero quest boards that are actually facing each other. So the top board is turned around 180 degrees. Dragon Quest. This is the actual Dragon Quest board. That is awesome. Dragon Strike Castle, Dragon Strike Cavern, Dragon Strike City, Dragon Strike Valley, Egyptian Hero Quest, whatever that means. I have no. Did the Egyptian edition of this game actually have a different board? Mini Furniture Hero Quest. This looks to be the exact same as regular Hero Quest. Oh, there are actually uh, the, the corridors around the sides of the board are double tiled. Hero Cults. This has the Hero Cults board. That is that is hilarious. A map called Semi Modular. I'm not sure what that is yet. Something called Side Room Hero Quest, which actually puts the board in the middle of the canvas. I'm not sure why that is. Oh, it's so we can place our icons around the board. I see. Side Room Hero Quest, which actually places the board in the center of the canvas. Uh, this is so you can do stuff like put heroes on the outside of the map. However, be careful if you try to switch maps from this point, it'll tell you there's an error. There's heroes outside of the board. So you'll have to delete your heroes or whatever icons you place down while you were testing. Space Crusade. This is really just a big envy, empty canvas. I imagine the icon packs come with the map sections though, just like with the advanced hero quest option. I'm sure that that's how we populate this. Spaceship Corridor, it's the same. And Dwarf Quest, which looks like just a bunch of grid squares. I'm sure, I'm sure the icon packs give us context though. All right, I love that the Dragon Strike boards are in here. That lets me create Dragon Strike quests. That is amazing. Uh, for now, we can just pick the standard default hero quest board. I'll put my four heroes right here in the board. Super easy. You can see that the icon is attached to my mouse cursor. I know exactly where they're going to go before I click. And we can grab us some monsters. We'll go ahead and throw all four chaos warriors in there. <laughs> Finally, some Skaven. Finally. Finally, that good Skaven food. We have the Rat Ogre, we have a regular Skaven, we have a Troll, and we have the White Seer. These are the four icons that would have come if we had only gotten the Skaven from that Hero Quest Marvel Winter Special. Change the region to USA layout so we could see those a little bit better. Yeah, that's awesome. Love it. I love that we have the option of the Japanese icon set. I mean, we have, we have all of the icons, guys. That's basically it. We can now build our quest without any sort of limitations. If you want to turn the icon attached to your cursor, you can just right click and it will turn. So I'm, I'm right clicking and it's not setting it down. It's just turning it, just changing its, its orientation. So that way we can have our bookcases, for example, fit where we want them to fit. Can you imagine having this many bookcases? Some, some collector out there does have this many bookcases. Put some coffins, make the loss meme. We've got trapped furniture icons as well. So orange and green, weapons rack. We're gonna make a new board and this time we are going to add rooms. So we're doing advanced hero quest and then I can just plop down these rooms of various sizes. They even change color when I go to USA layout. So they will remain visually congruent with whatever uh, resources that you want to use from other games. That is so fun. That is so, so cool. It's the the old in pit and we can put four of them. No, we can even change the orientation of the rooms. We've got large corridor. Put that like that. What's the chaos temple? Oh, it's actually just a little like five by six map. Cave spiral. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. Cave entrance. Cave long passage. Cave intersection. Durag doll. Fire bridge. Ooh, the implication there of hot lava underneath this precarious bridge section. I love that. An outhouse. Thank you. Thank you for that. Ogre horde. Full surface. Thank you, thank you for adding that. That is really cool. Back to the classic HeroQuest board. It's worth noting you can click this dark slash bridge and just make any dark room tiles you need to. Uh, if you want to switch to the European layout, it's fine. It'll keep all of the details that you've put on your map so far. You can also select and remove objects by using this middle. Click on a square to select it, hold right or control click to delete its top object, shift click to drag it. So the hotkeys are very, very useful. Uh, I just tried moving a bunch of heroes around 
manually and it was not worth it. This lets us put board sections down that are not from HeroQuest onto the HeroQuest board. I, I know that was implied, but I love it. I love it. So the one thing this does not seem to allow us to do at all, doesn't even touch, is the ability to write in the quest text, the name of the quest, the quest notes, any of that. This just seems to be a tool only for making maps. Now you could very well create your entire quest except for the map in another tool like HQuest Builder, and then export the map that you make in HeroScribe as a .png file. Then you'll have to use a tool to insert that PNG file into the PDF that your HQuest Builder quest creates. There's a bit of a process, but it's absolutely doable. I can put the Dungeons and Dragons Fantasy Adventure board game boards on the HeroQuest board. This actually works so well. The tiles perfectly line up, whereas in real life, there's a little bit of a size difference, so the tiles would not line up. This actually just fixes that problem. That's, that's amazing. Do note that if you do that, and then you try to play your quest with real elements, if you do have all of the physical components needed to play a kit-bashed quest like that, things may not line up exactly. So absolutely feel free to test your creations before you finalize any sort of quest design using this map maker. Well, I've learned some things. Uh, I've learned that for total quest creation, I'm still going to use HQuest Builder and possibly questbooklet.com. We'll be exploring that one next. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Comment anything you'd like down below. Feel free to admonish me for never having touched Hero Scribe before. And if I completely missed one of the features that you would have liked to have seen in this video, please let me know about that as well. How do you create quests with this? How do you get your quest text and everything with your maps that you make in this program? Did I completely miss the mark on how to do that? Let me know. And as always, have a great rest of your day, and bye for now.